This is Comic Picks by The Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. Welcome to... Uh, oh, wait. This is your podcast anyway. So, hey. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, and it's good to be here. Yeah. So, what do you got going on for us? Okay. Week? Well, tonight I got something I've been reading for a good long while. It's like well over a decade, in fact. Um, something that I've that I initially enjoyed. It's like came, came to dread reading. And eventually just, you know, kind of like buckled down and fin and finished with it because, you know, like wasn't going to stop after reading it for, you know, well over a decade at this point. I am talking about um, Fumi Yoshinaga's like like epic alternate history series, um, Oku. It's like now Yoshinaga is, um, before she did this series, she was very well known for, for a long history of um, yaoi works, but also um, some excellent mainstream stuff in terms of like her, uh, um, her, uh, like a romantic comedy series, Antique Bakery, or high school, her high school series, um, Flower of Life, Let's see, and um, her ongoing, um, it's like um, gay guys and what they eat, um, series. Um, what what did you eat yesterday? I'm drastically minimizing that, but it's still, but it's good fun. It's like, and all these series um, have a hallmark of being like just really um, well, well, well executed um, character studies. Like characters are very very well well rounded it's like a multi-dimensional it's like and they're always and even if like the, the situations they find themselves in kind of like like quick them straight out of like the high school high school comedy troupe um handbook or just like the romantic romantic comedy guide it's like they're the way that um yoshinaga um like characterizes her her cast always makes for like thoroughly entertaining reading um regardless of the series she's doing oku is an however is um different in the sense that it is a it's like it is a very um it's like a it's like a meticulously de um detailed it's like um histor historical series that has a um great um like al alternate history premise basically what if the um tokugawa shogunate it's like that ruled japan during its period of isol isolation from this like um, from the 15 to the um 1800s what if it was actually actually a matriarchy instead of a patriarchy because the way this series starts off is that there's a um is that there's some um, japan is suffering from this um plague called the red face pox basically it's like a very an extremely virulent strain of it's like what looks like chicken pox um that basically um targets exclusively men and it's basically gets, gets to the point where only one in five um, males make it to it to adulthood this means that now now women are forced to take on like traditional traditional male roles like in it's like in the household as well as you know like you know the traditional roles like it's like being being bread being the breadwinners it's like and doing doing all the hard labor it's like and managing it's like managing businesses and also um ruling in the, in the government as well now the series starts off with the arrival of um let's see of the of the uh seventh let's see it's a seventh right Right, 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 right. No, it's the third. No, it's the third. No, it's the eighth. The eighth um, Tokugawa um, shogunate, um, Yosh Yoshimune. She was kind of a dark horse candidate to succeed the uh, to succeed the post, but after her um, very young predecessor um, died, um, died because um, she was because she was like like young, like young and weak. <clears throat> she's now Caesar's is. is is I'm um, running the place is now running the place herself, and we get to see see what the um what the place is like through like through her her eyes, but also the eyes of a new initiate to the uh, to the Oku, the inner chambers. Basically, the like a place staffed entirely entirely by men that is you know ostensibly meant to be a uh, it's like like basically her own it's like her own per, it's like her own personal harem, but also just you know like the men here are basically here. Like meant to um do all like the house household chores such as cook, cooking cleaning and and sewing, and there's all sorts of all sorts of drama drama between them as they try to assert assert their status. It's like and you know become the ones most fav favorable to the sho shogun's eyes, and and it isn't until the end of the fir first volume that um Yoshimune uh, when Yoshimune goes goes to visit the chief scribe that she learns that well as it turns out um the, the history of um the Tokugawa 
of the Tokugawa isn't entirely um, women, that there actually used to be men um, running the sh show as well. And it's part of this cr chronicle called Chronicle of the Dying Day. From this point, starting with volume two, then we flash back to the uh, like to the beginning of the era of the red red face pox in 1632, and then we get to learn about the uh, first, like the first um, um, sh female um, female shogun Iemitsu. And while there's and the thing about Oku is that there's a lot of um, political, like um, political scheming here. Lots of talk about just you know how you know, how the shogun's going to like um, enforce their will. It's like and like how though how those working under her are going to you know, either see see that will carried out or stymied as they try to advance their like their own agenda. But at the same time, there's also a a lot of um really well done soap opera here. It's like as um as Iemitsu, it's like you know struggles to deal with the fact that she's she's basically the bastard son of the real the bastard daughter of the real um Iemitsu, who's forced into this place because well like she's the only she's the only Tokugawa heir. And basically, because if there were no more Tokugawa heirs, then the the country would descend into chaos as everyone tried to fight it out to determine who was going to be the next, like, the, like I'm the next ruler. So basically, Imitsu has to has to deal with like all these um people like you know like I'm plotting and working with and against her, and to, and helping her along with that is um it's like is Arikoto a uh, a, a man who like a a Buddhist monk who was originally, you know, meant to, uh, like, but who was visiting, visiting the, the uh, castle on Edo Castle on business, but then winds up being like Shanghai and made to serve in the o Oku by the, uh, it's like by Emitsu's um, cra um, crafty senior chamberlain, Lady Lady Kasuga. So what follows in here is like a, it's a big tempestuous romance between them as they get to know each other, assert their love, but then have to deal with the fact that unfortunately. Um, Arikoto can't can't get her pregnant, so now you've got that's and so yet issues like this uh, that crop up at over the course, it's like over the course of every made it's like major, it's like um major, major sh shogun and it's like and her and her court. For instance, like the one that follows follows her um follows Iemitsu Iyetsuna, well she basically has like has a lot of love for her um adopted father. It's like. Arikoto, and that's what when she causes him to um, go back into the uh, and so he can reaffirm his, his Buddhist vows. Then you've got um, Tsunayoshi. It's like a it's like a practical shrewd shrewd lady who's got a has got a very strong domineering way about her, which also eventually clashes with clashes delightfully with her senior chamberlain Emonosuke, a guy who is well over the hill at um, it's like at, when he gets into the Oku at thirty at age thirty five, but um, nevertheless manages to is to win to win her over as well um do they live happily ever after no no they don't in fact um well i well there are much a lot of things i do like about this the series um yoshinaga's like excellent character character work among chief among them uh the problem problem is that it's i wouldn't say this is a very happy read this is not something you go, you go into expecting to uh get a uh Experience like a like grand historical romances, or marvel at you know how people will come come together in times of crises to like to help, like to solve things. I mean, yeah, these things do happen, but there's also a lot of human greed, greed, depravity, avarice, and poisoning. Lots and lots of poisoning. That being said, though, um, I hate and I this is kind of a spoiler to say it, but you'd be best not to put any money down any romance in this series um turning out um it's like the way it turning out i'm um, happily i mean well there are some background romances that you could say that oh well this this is fine this this works but all of the major stuff that that happens oh man it's like you're just setting yourself up for heartbreak here but it's like but then you get the uh, following um but then continue on from tsunayoshi the uh, following two sh shoguns are just there's Ienobu and Iyatsugu who die who dies early, way too early. And um it's like and then comes back to uh um Yoshimune at the end of volume seven. Then it's like getting into it's like and then her and her story continues through 
it's like um through volume nine up until her retirement and the appointment of her it's like of her see of her successor um yes she gay well and um and also the rise of the it's like of the Ishige's um, privy councillor, um, ok, see, ok, Okitsugu Tan, Tanuma. And, um, you know, it's like, on one hand, it's like, it's, and Okitsugu is one of those characters who you, you really want to root, root for in the sense that, you know, she's, she really has the people's best interests at heart, and she really wants to do, do right by them and also support her, like, support the shoguns that she's been, that she's been working with, because after, she passes away. She she um continues on the role of senior chamberlain to um to Ieharu. And so you think that this is that things are going to continue to go well, especially once um she meets like um we're introduced to some characters um who are, who ha like who have an idea of how to um go about solving the red face pox, such as um like foreign let's see um son of a uh, let's see like I'm um, son of a Dutch trader um uh, See Aonuma, who can who can read speak and read Dutch, and therefore um can, is able to understand like the uh um the Dutch the Dutch medical texts that um that he has access to while, work, while working at a port. He's eventually brought to the uh, interchamber interchambers by the rascal rascally um get see um Genai Hiraga, and um it's like and also and also introduced to the uh it's like one another senior chamberlain um. Kuro, See uh, Kuroki, a uh, Ryojin Kuroki. So, so they so they eventually come come together in a way to um use to use foreign medicine to try and find a way to um defeat the red red face pox. But this is but this is like a long um difficult process, and they're dealing with like a uh, country that you know basically like frowns upon it's like using um outside medicine or just like any kind of um you know it's like. Uh, like um for like um foreign knowledge because remember this is like the height of Japanese Japan's um isolation isolationist period. Even worse though for them and for the reader themselves is that this period also coincides with, with the rise of the the uh, series' biggest villain and worst character um Harusada um to Tokugawa. She is one of the three grandchildren. It's like of um of Yoshimune, and my God um you know. It's clear that that uh, Yoshinaga wanted to create a big, huge villain, like someone who is just, you know, completely, completely, and utterly without mercy, sympathy, or empathy, and is only in it, you know, to a, to advance their own interests, and like so they can enjoy the best things in life, and you know, just enjoy the ad and not really enjoy the adoration of of other other people, but just you know, because like hey, you know, because they figure that they they deserve it because you know they'd be bored otherwise she is to say that she is a monster is putting it lightly with all the stuff that that um that she does because poisoning people for sport hey you know like she does that as easily as she does breath takes breath especially when even when it comes to her grandchildren because she thinks that oh wow my my son who i've managed who she eventually manages to put into the role of shogun um well she decides to uh, have him just you know just you know like father kids left left and right and the one she doesn't like she just decides to poison them because hey you know, that's funny to her but also she ruin she ruins the life of it's like of, of okitsugu she bans the study of it's like of holland medicine and um it's like um puts um it puts ayonuma to, to death just because he's you know a foreigner who studies it and all and also helps orchestrate um the downfall of um it's like a Faragi of, of Genai. It's like who is, it's like who on one hand, yeah, he's she's kind of a like a like a loud mouth who doesn't know um, when to, uh, it's like it's like um, when to uh, when to speak quietly or you know speak politely. But what happens to her is just oh god, it's 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 awful. I mean, and um, it's not it's not just that she is assaulted. It's just that she winds up with an affliction that. Eventually, I caught will cause her to not remain at, as she is, and that's just that's just heartbreaking. It, it eventually all of this is at one point causes um causes um um Kuroki to like scream at the uh, it's like at the castle in the rain, just say about like you women are you are you not satisfied by what you've done here? And when 
this guy is like normally just like a really calm and collected guy, but to see him just like scream, like let it go like that, you know, you understand what he's going through here. And, um, but Harisada is just a gigantic, a huge monster and when i was rereading this series i mean i was pretty much enjoying everything you know up until, until this point but i also knew that oh my god she's gonna show up at some point and at this point it's just going to like the quality of the series is just gonna go down and it's like volume 10 is kind of like the real low point of the series because it's basically just harisada winning more than anything else and getting her way and the worst part about it is is that she wins without any struggle. I mean, she, yeah, we understand she's a clever, clever schemer and all, but there is really no struggle to her plot, to her plans. Every, whenever she puts something into motion, it always succeeds. And she's able to get away with so much stuff for so long that you think that, okay, she has to get her come up at some point. It's just a question of, is that come up and it's going to be worth it? <laughs> the answer, well, answer to me, it's no. Um, when she finally does um, get what she gets coming to her, it's not because um, she was defeated by people who are smarter and cleverer than her. It was because she lost lost her edge and just fell victim to some like to some long long term planning. I mean, for someone as evil as her, it's like she deserved much worse it's like than than what she, than what she got. And um, I understand that you know that. That that um, like that you know, like that the, sometimes villains do you know they don't always you know get what's coming to them. I mean, just you just look at real life, like for an like for an example example of that, and you get the feeling that 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 um, Yoshinago, you know, just kind of like it's like I mean, she she clearly wants this this uh, like the struggles in the series um to feel and the the successes in the series to feel earned through the character struggle. More than anything else in the series, um, Harisada's villainy is something that I just felt that you know she went too far on. That you know for what, like for what we got for how she was dealt with in the end, it's like it just wasn't worth the amount amount of pain that we had to put up with. I will say that um, the course of her downfall in Volume Twelve is paralleled nicely with with the ongoing efforts to solve the uh, the red face pox, um, it's like um, some plague. And um, it's and well, it's, I wouldn't say it's quite you know like a feudal um, Andromeda strain. It's like it's it's a great showcase of like you know of people just you know doing their best to uh, you know with the it's like with the materials at hand and the knowledge available to them to solve what seems like an impo- like an insurmount- insurmountable problem. And it's really satisfying to uh, like to see put into action. Also satisfying is the fact that um, once he's properly the emperor without his uh, mother in charge. Um, Ianari um, goes full bore into um, making sure everyone is vaccinated against the uh, it's like the red face pox. Everyone. It's like he basically commands people like command, commands his troops just you know break into people's houses, make sure the boys it's like the boys are getting it's like the boys are being vaccinated. And yeah, some people are explaining, well, I don't want a vaccine that maybe have come from bears. It's like and oh, like you know one in like one in 100 people may die from this well that's that's too big that's too bad for me but um no it's like he just it's like over the protestations of his it's like of the populace he makes sure that you know this this, this disease is is as close to being wiped out as it's like as you can po- you can possibly get and and well personally i find that ad- admirable and now's as good a point to, as any to talk about the parallels between hey you know it's like there's a disease here called the red fox, red face pox. Hey, there's still the COVID panic is still um still going on in present day. And you know what? Yeah, I get that these are both um both pandemics, but at the same time, they're very they're very different in their in their nature. And the one in Oku is far far more severe than than what's going on with it's like with um like with COVID. But so it's like. Really reading this, I don't know, it's like, I had no problem with, um, it's like, you know, like just, just accepting this as kind of like, hey, you know, it's like, it, this is a, this is a play, this is a completely different kind of thing. I can see how other people might have issues with this, but, um, Oku, but Oku's, um, the Red Face Fox is a good example of, hey, you know, it's like, things could have been a lot worse, um, than, than what we got. So, 
I'm personally able to sh like shrug it off with no no big deal. But that being said, um, it's like it, it is kind of an interesting coincidence how how Oku is finishing up in a time when it's it's like one of its plot points is a lot more relevant than it initially was when it when it started publication. Um, something else about its about its plot plot points as the uh, as the series goes into its final stretch from six from 13 to 19 is the fact that um one of the big issues that um that crops up um afterwards it's like it like after the eradication of the red fake pox is the arrival of the americans like in japan basically uh commodore perry makes his like makes his his, his uh his infamous visit to it's like to tokyo and japan is now faced with you know the fact that that uh that um oh, they're going to have to start interacting with the, with the wider world. Problem is that some of these people, some of these feudal lords, um, are really um against you know any kind of like outside inter like interaction. In fact, like barbarians out is their rallying cry as as the series goes goes on. And um you know it's like just and they're just determined to like see them like th like see these people like thrown out like by any means possible. Problem is that all the people who are actually in, well, most of the people in power, especially the people in the shogunate, they know that um, that the uh, that um, the, Japan is woefully, it's like um, unprepared to deal with any kind of military encounters with um, like between the Ameri Americans or any other um, foreign powers. They need to find a way to open open up the country like in a way that doesn't lead to Japan becoming a uh, it's like it's like a, a colony of a foreign power, at, such as in the way that they've heard um, China became to it's like to the, like um, to the British at around at around the same time. So that leads us to the uh, it's like the ne um, like the next Shogun. Um, oh, who was let's see who was this? Um, oh, yes, it's like Iesada, um, who. Also, that she was the uh, granddaughter of the, uh, it's like of, of Ienari, but also the daughter of Ieyoshi, um, who was a um, thoroughly ineffective um, shogun who just spent his days womanizing, and well, he's his days aren't going to continue even as his daughter, it's like it's like his daughter becomes shogun as well in very very ugly and repre reprehensible ways. Fortunately, Iesada has a thoroughly competent. Um, like senior counselor um, by the name of uh, Masahiro Abe, um, the kind kind who knows how to get get stuff done, which kind of which makes you which you, you think that hey you know like things are gonna start turning around now it's like now we got like good people in charge who have a uh, who, who have uh, like the uh, the people's best interest in mind and are trying to be smart about how to deal with the uh, with these um it's like with these barbarians, well which is why that um. Obviously, like you know, people are going to die young because you know we can't have. It's like we can't have people like you know succeeding for too long in this series, and also, um, yeah, it's like Iesada also um has to deal with the fact that like her her, her that two of her consorts were poisoned by her, it's like by her father who's jealous jealous of their position, and she also lost has a miscarriage as well. It isn't until she meets um, um Taniatsu. A, uh, it's like a like a samurai from the uh, Sat, from from the Satsuma region, who's sent to be her uh, her um, consort in the idea that he's going to convince her to pick Satsuma's um choice for the next next shogun. And um, but eventually when he gets there, he he actually falls in love with her, and um, he it's like and actually like wants and actually um does best to um, support her support her in her actions along with um the new senior. Um, senior Chamberlain of the Inner Chambers, um, Ta Takiyama, it's like a, a sam, like a sam, a, a boy from a samurai household, who's it's like who lost his parents and brother to, tra to tragedy. Worked it's like um, worked in a whore whorehouse for a while, but was eventually picked by um, it's like by Senior Counselor um, Masahiro Abe to um, become the new senior senior Chamberlain based on based on his intelligence that he demonstrated to her during one. One of her visits with with him in said whorehouse. So, so um, based, so you've got so basically you've got um, Takiyama, you've got Taniatsu, and you got um, Iesada, You know, trying trying their best to 
maneuver against the uh, bar barbarians out camp and also the increasing power of the uh, it's like of the em it's like of the emperor who's also like furious fiercely like wants these foreigners out out as well even though it seems like things are going their way for, way for a while well tragedy strikes again and it's time for a new shogun to it's like to take take the stage that's going that's going to be iemochi who even though she's quite young she is very wise very sharp and um knows and is good at uh, managing the uh the emperor's uh it's like uh emperor's moods to a surprising extent to the point where it's like you know he actually wants to become become on, becoming on her side after she pledges her pledges her life to like to um support to um save and support him um problem is this is um this actually comes after the emperor's um uh, house um, played a cruel trick on her, her because in order to promote um greater ties between the shogunate and the emperor they uh they were going to have like the shogunate marry one someone from the sh from the sh from the emperor's household problem is that that the uh that that the shog that the um, person who who the uh, emperor's house chose to marry really really didn't want to do this i mean like wow it's like you are a whiny little bitch man they call you a prince huh well thing is they eventually do send on um, this prince prince kazu over to um the emperor over to the sh shogunate only to find out that they've been tricked this prince is actually a princess um chikako it's like a girl who who is actually like a princess of of the household but is not talked about in play company due to a due to a deformity of her it's like of her right hand because it basically like it's like but she basically doesn't doesn't have one so so at first like you know so upon upon this revelation everyone like, says you know we got to keep quiet about this because otherwise like everyone will know that you know they that the emperor's house sent us sent a sent, sent us a woman to marry we accepted this and um we weren't able to we, we didn't figure it out in time the thing is though Yes, uh, you know she's got no problem with this because you know she thinks because even though like um Chicago is a bit is a bit standoffish, and she's got some real um like issues with her mother who really didn't love her at all, and still doesn't. Well, like she's she still got a certain she still got a great great intelligence about her in terms of just you know how to uh, how go about dealing with dealing with things and the problems of the day. So seeing um so even though like um Chikaku Chikako um doesn't like doesn't make the best impression initially, she eventually we the more we learn about her and the more we see her interact with Iasada, you know, it's like the more you realize that you know she's actually like a, a good person and someone that you know I'm glad to see added added to the cast. Unfortunately, well, remember what I told you about, you know, no uh it's like um no like um no relationships like um being no big relationship like ending in like ending happily ever after in this series and eventually thing, things take a turn and in the end it's left to uh chikako um taniatsu um Taki, takiyama it's like and, the, and one of the naval captains in it's like in the uh Tok tokugawa navy to uh to try and find a way to to forestall a uh like a civil war as the um as the major restoration takes place as as, as satsuma and Chos and chosu le like lead a re like lead a rebellion in order to finally take power from the from the shogunate and that leads us to the final volume volume 19. so how does uh how do things wrap wrap up well it's like there it's like there's not there's some there's some fighting the thing is like on the people the people um working on the shogunate side are thoroughly thoroughly crafty and clever negotiators and they know how to they know how to um it's like how how to um talk talk to the satsuma side specifically their um sats like um satsuma's um like a main military leader um takamori saigo it's like and they're able and on one hand they're able to uh like to you know extract some concessions from him up until the point where he, where he reveals his ugly side in the sense that he he basically accuses the fact he basically says the fact that um the Tokugawa shogunate the fact that they were all women is why Japan like has fallen so far behind. It's like and I'm going to it's like and and he's just determined to uh, 
and that's why, why he can't exceed to exceed to their demands. But it's then that's when uh, like Chicago busts in and like gives him a piece of her mind, and eventually he basically comes to realize, huh, you know what? All the female shoguns actually took male names, which was the style at the time. So you know, I'm willing to concede that you know the shogun at shogunate was men, like was led by men, and thus I'm willing to willing to concede concede your points. So what follows is a great winding down, as as the oku, the inner chambers, all and all the men who are still serving there, um, basically like the, like um come to the end of their come to the end of their days and are determined to see them out with, with dignity to show, to um, leave a place that was like thoroughly spotless, but was also like a, like showed, so this was a place of cla class and culture. And it's, it's like, and it's really kind of special. Just, you know, there's this feeling of like, Hey, you know, like everything, like your strongest, as she's reached the end of her story, but she's putting everything in her place in its place. And it's, and it's really nice up until the end when, well, you know, it's like someone realizes that, hey, you know, it's like I really couldn't leave this place. It's like in in the end and tragedy hits because, of course, it does. There's a lot of there's a lot of tragedy and sadness. It's like in, in the story and it's on one hand. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating to see to like read this when there's just so much of the same. It's like, you know, just waiting you like whenever you check check the news on any given day. But the uh, but the final chapter, which goes, which takes place four years into the Meiji rest Meiji era, well, turns out she's got one last surprise surprise for us, both in terms both in terms of who all's there to uh, witness this this new era, and also just you know talking about you know what it represents, but also a very clever like final line when one of the characters basically tells like a group of Japanese girls who are going overseas that I'll let you know a little secret, you know some of the shoguns. They were women, and you know it's like it was around then that it finally hit me what um, what uh, Yoshinaga was trying to do with this series because I mean it's not just it, on one hand yeah this is this is technically an alternate history series but at the same time the way it ends it ends in in a way that basically like you know takes us back onto the main timeline it's like because um, one of the things that the uh, samurai who come to uh, Edo it's like after it's like after it's um after, after the shogunate surrender has been negotiated it, they do is that they burn all the papers so there's no record that you know of these female shogunates all it, only record that, rep that remains is is from those who knew knew the truth at the time so you could say that there is no that you know it's like that on one hand like she's basically trying to like you know like create her own create her own history here it's like basically it's it's like an act of conjuring to uh to, like to just say that hey you know it's like this is the real truth it's like of the it's like of the world I mean yes um Jap Japan yeah we know that um Japan's like shog shoguns were were men but you know maybe maybe it's possible that, they, that there's probably a pretty good case for um for them being women and let me and let me tell you all about that and. And this, this, and she gives you the story full of like, full of great his, historical detail, like um, great memorable characters. It's like who, it's like who, who, who laughed, cried, suffered. It's like and and even and even triumphed from time time to time. Basically, like a like a thoroughly like memorable memorable set of, set of characters who made who made this this version of history come alive and kept it from becoming it's like a dry it's like a dry textbook and gave it a moments of war, warmth and humor. Even when um, we were dealing with some some true villains who were just like who only had the worst like like in store for the for the uh, for the country, so it's like really it's like so even though it's like there are some parts of Loku that I really did not enjoy um, rereading, it's like on whole it's like the series is is really kind of magical. It's like it offers it's like it's it makes it makes it tries to make its own compelling case. That you know, hey, like the real history of of Japan was it's like was writ written and done by women, and you know by read and in reading this, it's like I can I look at that and say, hey, you know, that's actually not a bad thing. Just uh, nobody tell the Department of Truth about this. Um, Director Oswald um, might have some issues with that. So that's all all I got.
and um, it's like so I'm looking forward to whatever um, Yoshinaga has as next, as well as like three true volumes of of um what of um what did you eat yesterday as well. But I think her like between this and um Antique Bakery, which if I'm gonna be honest, I, Antique Bakery is like more is is probably more fun and definitely like a much e light, lighter and easier read than Oku. But Oku, like even for like, all of its ups and downs, is thoroughly worth reading throughout all of its 19 volumes. And I would highly recommend it to to anyone who's interested in, in what this sounds like. Cool. So you know what? It sounds interesting. So you know what you're going to be talking about next time. Well, if everything goes right next time, Rob will be back because we're talking going to be talking about much, much lighter um, concerns next time, which would be the future of the X, of the X Men, specifically in Inferno, and also probably um X Lives and Deaths of Wolverine. So we'll see how that goes. All right, and we'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, later's.